Welcome to another episode of The Dark Parade. My name is Bo, and I'm a found footage fool. <laughs> Tell me the camera thing isn't annoying. Yeah, it's annoying. Hey everyone, uh, welcome back uh, to a found footage fool. This one will be a little bit shorter than the others because I'm not doing um, several movies all at the same time. I'm instead doing... Uh, just the the one but it is a listener request and I'm hoping that uh, that that specialness the fact that it is a request and movie will make up for it so by all means uh, if you would like to request a movie for this series then uh, please head over to the discord channel if you go to legionpodcasts.com uh, go to the shows page and and click on the dark parade you will uh you will get to a page that has all the old episodes as well as links to um the facebook group and the twitter and um the discord channel and the discord channel is the one that i i pay attention to the most just because it is the most direct communication there are no ads it is just us talking about movies and and random silliness and uh court every now and again throwing in a meme um And a lot of Jason uh, talking about terrible movies he's watching. Um, And recently posted an image of a movie called Swim, but had, uh, as he pointed out, one of the worst, like, logo treatments I've ever seen uh, for a movie. So, yeah, anyway, head over to the Discord. The Discord's a lot of fun, and I pay attention to it, you know, pretty much entirely during my waking hours, uh, unless I'm dealing with you know, kid stuff or sleeping, uh, which would not fall into waking hours now that I think about it. Anyway, the movie we're doing today is, uh, as a listener request that came out of the discord and the, the movie is called series seven, the contenders. And so a little bit of background on this movie. I had, I've, I've always kind of known about this movie and had never seen it. Um, I kind of knew the, the gist of it. I thought it was British for some reason. Maybe it's because it was called series seven and you know how those people have a different word for everything, uh, and, and called shows there like series, uh, you know, like series three is of the office or whatever, instead of season three, uh, traditionally. So for that reason, I think I had always assumed that this was a, a British film, which it completely isn't. And which blew my mind, y'all. Uh, <laughs> so uh, it, it is, in fact, a very American movie. It is written and directed by a guy named Daniel Minahan. And Daniel Minahan has a pretty interesting career. Uh, Series 7 The Contenders is his first directorial job. He wrote a movie called, well, he wrote this and he wrote a movie called I Shot Andy Warhol, which is kind of an interesting art house film. Uh, starring, I'm going to forget her name, uh, Lily Taylor, and uh, also Jared Harris and Martha Plimpton is in it. And, it, and it's totally about a, uh, uh, you know, uh, the this, you know, Valerie Jean Solanas, who, uh, played by Lily Taylor, who, who shoots Andy Warhol. Um, so, you know, that's something. And Jared Harris plays Andy Warhol, so how can you go wrong? Um but so he wrote that and then apparently kind of, you know, pivoted the success of selling that script into making this movie, which is a uh, very low budget. Clearly like there, there is not a big, uh, a big budget here. And, um, the basic premise of the movie. Oh, also to can you, the, the, the thought of Daniel Minahan, sorry. So Daniel Minahan then went on to direct a bunch of like prestige television. Like he directed episodes of the L word, L word and six feet under and Deadwood and, uh, game of Thrones and true blood. And, um, he, you know, uh, recently did a, a mini series called Halston and, uh, American crime story and house of cards and, like, you know, the guy has become a very, very successful television director and has a, a new series coming up uh, pretty soon called Fellow Travelers, uh, which I don't know anything about Fellow Travelers um, other than Matt Bomer is in it. The the dude uh, what was in White Collar. And anyway, so, uh, yeah, so Daniel Minahan 
totally uh, successful director. Um, this is the only, I mean, True Blood is kind of horror, I suppose. I mean, it certainly deals in horror trappings, but most of the stuff he did is, is outside of the genre. It's more dramatic television or in the case of Game of Thrones, kind of fantasy drama, high fantasy drama. Um, but, uh, so the series seven, the contenders, the, the basic premise of it is that, um, you know, you just live in a world where a, a television crew can bust into your house and say to you like, Hey, you're on the contenders. And what that means is now you are up for a great cash prize or whatever. Um, which, you know, is irrelevant. I don't even remember what the, the prize money was. It's not, not the thrust of the show to be sure. But the, the, the issue is that, um, you are now in a game where other people are trying to kill you and you have to kill them to win the prize. And, we're introduced uh, at the beginning of the film to the characters who are going to be, um, you know, participating in this season. There is the returning champion, Dawn, as played by Brooke Smith, who you would know uh, if you're listening to this. She is the senator's daughter in The Well in uh, Silence of the Lambs. And she's been in a bunch of stuff, but that's... You know, it, it's almost a shame that's what she's most famous for. I mean, it's such a tremendous movie, but and, and she's great in it. But boy, talk about a, a, a role that kind of overshadows the rest of your career. Um, you know, it, it would be like if it doesn't matter who it is, doesn't matter what, what actor it was. If the first time you saw an actor, they were in the well screaming at Precious, then that's how you're going to know it, you know? Um, but anyway, so she plays a woman who is pregnant, by the way, and is, you know, uh, trying to keep herself alive by murdering the other people on this show. And, you know, she's got a bit of a, a fan base, but also plenty of people who think that she's just a monster. But she's also very practical about this. Like, hey, th this is the world we live in. Uh, these are the hands we're given. Sorry, I slipped into a, a Genesis land of confusion hole for a second. No, <laughs> she she's like, this is what I got to do to protect me and mine and my baby. And so if I gotta if I gotta kill some motherfuckers to do it, then that's what's gonna happen. And she doesn't feel great about it. This is not something that you know, like she's a a, a really like a, not ambiguous character, but uh, you know, ambivalent maybe. Um, in the sense that she she does not take any pleasure in killing these people. She just wants to be done with it. And the idea is that if she wins this season uh, of the contenders, then she's going to be able to sort of get on with her life. You know, have this baby, have have some money in the bank to take care of the baby. And the the one of the complaints I have with the movie is that it doesn't actually spend a whole lot of time talking about the greater world surrounding, you know, the, the series seven stuff or the contender stuff. Um, you know, you certainly get an idea that <laughs> things in America ain't great. And that's why you have this like purge television show. Uh, but it, you know, on the one hand, I like the fact that it doesn't get mired down in that and get real didactic about, you know, here's, how we went wrong it's more of a natural extension of our you know voyeurism as a people and how we have kind of gamified so much of life uh up to and including human life and so that's how you get this kind of business right you you get a television show like this because you don't really give a shit about your fellow man and if someone else's misery can entertain you for half an hour then so be it. And the way that the the movie is presented is you are watching a marathon of this television show. And you are watching the entire season all at once. They're, you know, broken up into like 20, 30 minute episodes. And which I also like. I like the construction of this a lot. And um anyway, so that that is the basic premise. You've got her, you've got Connie, who is an older woman. Um, who is a nurse and would seem to be very, if not pious, then at least more moral, but she's kind of the most 
freewheeling murderer of all. Uh, there's a real sleaze bag named Tony, um, who you know it, it tries to weasel out of all of this. Uh, Lindsay is maybe my favorite character, who is a younger girl uh, in the sense that she's a teenager, and um, <laughs> she uh, gets tapped for the show. And her parents are way more excited about they're like, oh, you're going to totally win this. Here are all these guns that we've got. And they're, you know, they're almost stage parents for this show. Uh, so I, I think all of that stuff is uh, is really great. And um, I think Jeff is the character's name uh, that is like an old high school flame of our lead. Um, and you know, like the, now they've got to theoretically kill one another, but that's made more complicated because Dawn and Jeff, uh, dated in high school and, you know, don't really want to kill one another. And also he's going to die. He's got a terminal illness. So he's sort of like, Hey, if you got to kill me to win this money, then eh, that's kind of fine with me. So, you know, and a lot of interesting dynamics at work in, in the film. But this is not just a review show, ladies and jelly spoons. This is, of course, uh, Found Footage Full. And if we're doing Found Footage Full, we are putting this movie to a test. And those tests are uh, whether or not the this movie can uh, live up to a, a, a set of criteria that we've established for Found Footage movies. And uh, so let's uh, let's start with the number one slot, which is, of course, keeping the camera on. Is there a good reason to keep the camera on for uh, Series 7, The Contenders? And, of course, there is. Uh, like, all of this is done in a television show style. Um, as we have talked about on this show before, it is not exactly found footage in the sense that, hey, these aren't tapes that somebody found in the woods and, you know, the more traditional found footage story. This is instead of that, you know, we're doing this mockumentary kind of style film. And while not technically found footage, uh, it, it certainly falls into the larger realm of sort of, you know, uh, amateur camera or uh, we're, we are seeing this through a fir first person perspective um, from the view of a cameraman is sort of how I, I classify found footage or... Um, through observational cameras, like, uh, um, not just GoPros and stuff like that, but like security cameras and security feeds and that kind of thing that as long as we're doing that, it is found footage, um, in, in the looser definition. So yes, keeping the camera on totally makes sense. Um, there was never a question in the movie of, hey, you know, how did they get this shot? You know, there's always a cameraman involved. And one of the, the things I enjoy most in the movie is at a certain point, they are unable to actually show the characters of the film. And so they do a very television show kind of thing of doing a reenactment with actors. And it's really funny and sad all at the same time. Uh, really nice use of that kind of stuff. So even when the, the movie slips out of that found footage mo mode, to go into something that is clearly staged. Uh, the, the movie acknowledges like, Oh, this is staged. We're doing a reenactment now and we're doing this for sort of dramatic and thematic purposes. So, uh, keeping the camera on totally fine. Um, the character's also a big winner. Um, you know, the character of Dawn is really interesting and unusual, uh, of seeing someone who is, you, you know, pregnant and, and has that kind of mama bear vibe, but is also, you know, torn by what she has to do, but has been doing it long enough now that she can kind of call, you know, who is going to be a problem. Like right off the bat, she's like, okay, I'm going to go take Tony out and just goes outside his, his, uh, his house and calls him from the car. And is like, I'm outside, come outside right now. I'm going to kill you. And freaking him out, you know, playing the mind game a little bit and all that stuff I think is, is super fun. And, um, so the character, like Dawn's a great character. Connie's a great character. Tony's really fun. Jeff is a really interesting, uh, conflicted character. There's, uh, his wife, uh, Sheila, I believe is her name and getting into like her character and, and her relationship with Jeff, who may also 
may or may not have been gay or certainly is at least bi um, and how she's dealt with that and also the fact that because of his cancer he is impotent now and what that means and it you know like it deals with kind of complicated issues it doesn't get deep into that stuff but it certainly adds a layer of texture to these characters that is above and beyond what you see in most found footage from movies to be fair so I, I think that's uh, quite interesting and yeah all of that stuff is really good uh, you'll also notice the voice of the narrator is Will Arnett from I mean from everything now from Lego Batman and, and Arrested Development and you know God only knows there have been so many uh, appearances of Will Arnett voice only um, but also uh, he's, he's a very funny guy and you know, he has the right voice for this kind of thing of, you know, coming up next um, on Series 7, The Contenders. It, that that kind of stuff all works. So, yeah, the, the characters are really interesting and, and pull you through this story. And, you know, the movie is not terribly long to begin with. It's, you know, hour 40, something like that. Um, and, in you know, it, the characters are good enough that you care. Like, you certainly care about what happens to Dawn at the end of this film. Um, you know, you, you're not just because she's pregnant, but because she is, you know, just struggling. Like, you understand how conflicted she is. Like, oh, I might have to kill a guy that I really care about to save my child. And that is a, a, a real great dramatic hook. Uh, you know, you just tell somebody that like the elevator pitch for the movie doesn't have to be the found footage part of it. It can be, Hey, on a game show in the near future, a woman who is pregnant is forced to murder a man that she loved, uh, to protect her unborn child. And that's pretty good. You've got a pretty good dramatic hook there. So, um, all that stuff uh, works fine. Um, then you get to authenticity you know, there are times when it feels a little exaggerated, uh, but not terribly. I mean, if you look at, at sort of modern culture, and, and keep it in mind, this movie was made in 2001, or probably made in 2000, released in 2001, uh, somewhere in that neighborhood. And it does feel, you know, frighteningly authentic that you know, there is certainly a segment of the American population that would love for this show to be real. Uh, based on <laughs> the bumper stickers I have seen uh, running around in my day-to-day -day life and and just some of the rhetoric that you see online and that kind of thing, that there there is a, a really angry, um, uh, voyeuristic is a term I used before talking about this movie, but it's, it's absolutely the case. Like, that is what this movie is kind of examining is you know, basically using human beings suffering for our own entertainment. And there's not a giant difference between something like fear factor and uh, a, a show like this, you know, that is not the biggest leap in the world. So uh, it, it's, it's frightening. And like I said, there, there are moments that feel maybe a little less, um, a little less true, a little less possible than others. But in the grand scheme of things, like if, if, you know, in a world where food and water is going to become more scarce potentially uh, because of climate change, that the idea of seeing human beings compete over such things, uh, whether it's money or, or whatever, um, you know, with, with some of them not making it out alive, that's not crazy. You know, you're just taking reality television to a further step. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan of that show alone where you just drop people out in the middle of the wilderness and you're like, all right, just make it, <laughs> you know, like you've got a handful of things. Uh, see if you can build yourself a, a shelter and make fire and, and feed yourself. And I find that kind, kind of stuff interesting. I, I, I think, you know, the ingenuity of some of uh, those situations is, is really compelling. But also, but also, um, it is not a far cry. To, like, what if you just let those people die if they didn't make it? You know, that is not a, a step too far in in terms of you know the intellectual acrobatics you've got to do to get to a place that produces a show like the contenders and yeah so i you know uh, for every misstep i felt was in the movie there are two or three that feel all too possible 
So, I, you know, authenticity, a minor ding there, but for the most part, I think it's quite authentic um, in terms of possibility, right? Like, it, it's not, it, it is not our present, it is a version of our present that is not too dissimilar. Like, th- this is the, in the multiverse world, this is the, the universe next door to ours where a couple of different decisions were made and now human life is just gamified. Um, which brings us to watchability is, is this movie watchable? Uh, absolutely. It it is one of the more watchable movies that we've talked about on found footage fool. It's really entertaining. Um, it, you know, for all of it, it, like clearly this was not made for a lot of money, but regardless of that, it, it feels authentic. It feels, um, professionally done like it does not seem like a a real slapdash production like a lot of found footage movies that we talk about do you know this is an honest to goodness movie made by a professional who clearly went on to do a lot of very professional work like you know say what you will about those last game of thrones seasons uh you know this guy was was there doing some of the lord's work and getting that fantasy show um to to be brought to the public in a way that the public could not get enough of. So, you know, he's a good director. He understands pacing. The movie knows when to slow down and take a breath and kind of explore the characters and, and do a little bit of world building and then when to do, you know, some ridiculous violence. And that stuff works really well. Like, it doesn't... The movie's not wall-to-wall people killing each other like The Running Man or something where most of that movie is just the chase. Um, this you know, kind of takes a break and, um, you know, has moments just where Dawn as the main character is sort of looking out the window as she's being filmed, musing about the fact like, Hey, I didn't think I was ever going to come back to this town. This is where I grew up. And now that I'm back here, I can show them that I made something of myself. Um, but that's a real bittersweet sort of acknowledgement that, Hey, I am famous for killing people, but I did more than they ever expected. I would, uh, you know, stuff like that. It's just, it, you know, like I said, when we were talking about characters, like the characters really pull you through the narrative here and, and it's really good. And when you get to the ending, there's almost a natural born killers kind of vibe to the end of this, but it's also very, very sad, uh, in a way that natural born killers can't be because the, the main characters are just so loathsome you know they're not not even anti-heroes they are uh antagonists in the film um whereas this you know you have two people trying to figure out how to beat the system and and sort of the greater theme of this movie is that you can't you know it is the system that determines who lives and dies and you can rail against it you can fight against it you can scheme against it at the end of the day you you will not win and that's, you know, again, something that we certainly struggle with this very day uh, here in these United States is, you know, how how much do we give over to corporate culture and corporate authority and how much do we give over to government authority and, you know, things like the stripping away of Roe v. Wade and, um, you know, corporations as people and all of that stuff where that kind of thing just diminishes human autonomy. You know, the, the ability to say that I own myself and can make decisions about my own my own health, my own well-being, my own body in the cases of, of Roe v. Wade. Um, you know, it, it's a frightening notion. And, and there is a very cynical uh, approach to it in Series 7, The Contender. But it also has moments that are very funny. And, and so I don't want to suggest that it's a real bummer of a watch or anything it's really fun but it deals with some heavy stuff um so anyway that brings us to our final category which is scares how scary is this movie and this is not a straight ahead horror movie in the way that some of the movies uh on this show we have discussed are this is much more of a you know futuristic thriller is probably overstating it because it is very near future or universe next door as opposed to being you know sci-fi um but it it's more intellectually frightening when you think about how close we are as a species and as a society to something like this 
where we have completely thrown human value out the window. So, uh, I, you know, it's not a movie that you're going to be frightened when you're watching it unless you have very specific fears about like, oh, what if there were a angel of death nurse in the hospital where I'm staying or something like that? Maybe you get some scares that way. I don't, I don't find this to be a terribly scary movie in terms of the moment to moment stuff, but I found it to be a really valuable and, and rich experience to th- kind of pluck apart the movie a little bit. And while it's not necessarily scary, it is, uh, you know, interesting as a thought experiment and, and frightening in the, in the way that like Shirley Jackson's, the lottery is frightening or, catch 22 is frightening you know it's it's a deeper sort of soul dread of oh yeah this is kind of the world we live in and and that's horrifying um so you know it's not jump scares and and um you know creepy monsters stalking in the woods it is you know a a much more real horror of our society isn't far away from this sort of extremism uh, and and this sort of di- diminishment of of human life, and that you know that's <laughs> that's scary in a way that uh, the Blair Witch will never be. Uh, and, you know, but I don't think you're going to walk away from this movie. That all said, I don't think you're going to walk away from this movie that thinking, you know, that was one of the scariest movies I, I ever saw. Um, instead, I think you would walk away from this movie, um, you know, entertained and and hopefully thinking about how close we are to that kind of thing. And, and whereas I think series seven is a bit cynical, uh, you know, look, I'm an optimist. I, I believe in the Camus sort of, uh, idea of hope, which is, um, how do you hope in the face of, of total despair and just deciding that is what the human condition is, is to be hopeful and optimistic, even in the face of, um, you know, total oblivion. And so I'm a, I'm an optimist at heart. I, I really do think that we as a people, like we go through cycles and I, I think we're, you know, certainly, uh, if not at a nadir or coming out of a nadir of, of culture here in the United States, um, and, and sort of, uh, you know, blaming our neighbors and fear and, you know, and, and how can you blame us? Right. Uh, after, uh, four years of a president that was incredibly divisive. No matter no matter if you liked him or not, he was a divisive figure, and and then a worldwide pandemic which made us all go inside for fear of losing our lives. Um, you know that kind of stuff is traumatizing as a, as a species. We are we are traumatized, and uh, so you, you know it, it's um it's hard to be optimistic in the face of that, but hopefully um, that will be the eventual climb out of it is is sort of, um, you know, more justice for people, more, uh, more hope for, for tomorrow. Um, You know, we'll see how all that goes. Like I said, I, I'm I'm a cockeyed optimist, but you know, series seven is the flip side of that, of we either get better as a species or we end up, realizing that there are too many of us and as a species and that some of us got to go. And if some of us have to go, how about they entertain the rest of us on their way out? And that's, that's a terrifying idea. Um, but one that's not completely out of the realm of possibility, you know, like it's not like our species did not enjoy gladiatorial games. This is just the update of that. And it would be uh, a real shame if we ever went back to something like that. Although I don't rule it out. You can't rule that out because there are too many movies about this sort of thing where people are like, oh, yeah, that'd be cool. You know, like The Running Man was very popular and and still is in some circles. Um, and and it's not because, uh, you know, they don't think that the game show would be fun. Um, so anyway, that is Series 7, The Contenders. I, I want to thank again uh, our listeners for sending in. Um, a movie like this. And I'll, I will say one other note about this. It was really tough to come by. This was not a movie that was easy to get my hands on. And the reason for that is it's just not on any of the streaming services. I ended up 
Uh, I don't know if it's in print anymore. I ended up getting a DVD secondhand for not a lot of money. I don't think the demand is super high for it, but um, you know, it, it seems to have been relegated to you know sort of cinematic obscurity, which is a shame because it's uh, it, it's a solid movie. Um, I do recommend it. I really enjoyed watching it, and, I, and moreover, I, I enjoyed you know talking about it. So um, yeah. Uh, that'll do it for this time. Um, next week, it might be a, a Heart of Horror with Kate. Again, we've had trouble scheduling that. If not, um, with it being the holiday, I, I might end up doing a deep dive. And I'm kind of looking at doing deep dive episodes that don't require a guest. Uh, if you listen to the old Hero Hero Go Show, it would be more along those formats. Um, so we'll see. I'm, I'm playing with, with some ideas of like, how, how can I get back to doing, um, really, uh, you know, (laughs) deep tissue, you know, explorations of a movie without the scheduling problem. Cause the, the scheduling is difficult for me. Not so much that I don't have the time to dig into this stuff because I can do my notes and do my research. It's more about scheduling time to, record somebody else and do the editing piece of that. So, um, we'll see, we'll see one way or the other, there'll be a show next week. I'm just not sure what that show will be yet. Uh, and it, and it might get experimental. So (laughs) you, you guys are in for a treat. Um, all right. Hey, uh, that's it for now. Thanks so much. Uh, you know, obviously rate and review where you can, um, if you can hop over to that discord server again, if you, uh, if, if you're part of the, uh, Facebook group for the Dark Parade. There is a link to the Discord there. You can also go to legionpodcast.com and uh, click on the shows uh, in the banner of the menu at the top of the screen, and that'll lead you to a list of all the podcasts on Legion Podcasts. And uh, if you click on the Dark Parade, that'll take you to a page with all the old episodes, as well as a link to all of the social media channels. But click on that Discord server and uh, and jump in. And, you know, join the conversation, recommend some movies, because if you do, clearly, I will, I will, if it's a movie that sounds remotely interesting, I will absolutely watch it and then, you know, talk about it on an episode for 30 minutes. So, <laughs> um, that'll do it for this week. Uh, thanks for listening and thank you, thank you, thank you as always for joining the Dark Parade. We'll see you in a week. <laughs>